welcome to this special edition of the France 24 Observers. It's been two weeks now since the Americans and their allies left Afghanistan. They evacuated tens of thousands of Afghans, but they left the rest of the nation in the hands of the Taliban. Now, the group's spokesmen say they have changed, that they are the Taliban 2.0, more tolerant than during their brutal reign in the 1990s. But have they really changed? And are they one group? The well-equipped special forces who took over the airport in the capital belong to the powerful Haqqani network. At the same time, their rivals, the Durrani, have been showing off weapons they seized in their power base in Kandahar in the south. The Haqqani are based in the east, the Durranis, the founders of the Taliban in the south and the southwest. But what about ordinary Afghans? What is it like to live under Taliban rule? We've been talking to our observers around the country. The Taliban don't have a uniform, but it's easy to recognize them. They have dirty long hair and long beards and guns. When you talk to them, they say they don't know the city. In the way they talk and dress and behave, it's clear most of them have never been in a city until now. The Taliban act like they still live in the mountains. They go to people's houses in groups of five or ten and expect people to feed them the way they used to in remote villages in the mountains. That's the tradition in the villages, but it's not how people behave in the cities in Afghanistan. Their behavior is very violent. They intimidate people in the street. They ask people to drive them around. They eat at people's houses or ask them for money for food. The Taliban have been doing targeted searches to look for activists. They haven't announced it officially. They do it quietly to avoid attracting attention. They have lists of people who were working with foreigners or who were working or volunteering as social activists. The Taliban assassinated one of my colleagues. She was a women's rights activist and a nurse. They came to her house and shot her in the forehead. Now, women in Afghanistan feel especially at risk. The Taliban say they will be allowed to work and study. But our observers say that the Taliban in their cities so far have been telling women to stay home. Some women, especially young women in the cities who've never known life under the Taliban, have been standing up for their rights. We spoke to one of them who helped organize a protest in the capital. We'll call her Shamila. The Taliban were very violent. They beat us with iron cables and the butts of their rifles. They shot in the air to break up the main demonstration. We women are not naive. We know what the Taliban can do to us. But when we are together, we feel strong. We weren't afraid today when they were beating us up. We're going to continue our protests until we are free. Outside Afghanistan, we tend to regard the Taliban as a single entity, a single organization moving forward with a common purpose. But in fact, it is made up of different factions who could even plunge Afghanistan back into war. Mokhtar Wafai is an Afghan journalist who's been studying the Taliban for years.
در واقع دورانی ها و شبکه حقانی هم از لحاظ مالی و هم از لحاظ تجهیزات نظامی شاید با هم مساوی باشند برای برای ساوردن کرسی های مهم مایاتی حکومت افغانستان مبتنیش در بین فرماندهان طالبان از قبایل مختلف و یک جنگ ویرانگر داخلی بی انجامند یعنی هیچ تضمینی وجود نداره که دوباره همو سانابی دهی نوت در بین طالبان تکرار شود فرماندهی خلیل الرحمن حقانی نهادهای بسیار حساس قابل را در اختیار گرفتند و بقیه گروه های طالب اجازه ورود به تاهات امنیتی خاص مثل ریاست امنیت ملی، وزارت دفاع، وزارت داخله، رودگاه بیننلی کابل ندادن یکی از نگرانی ها هم همین است که اگر ساختاری که در این در افغانستان شکل میگیره اقدامی را که رهبران سیاسی طالبان میکنه همون رویا و ایده و آرمان جنگجوهای افراطی طالبان را برآورده نکنه ممکن است این شبکه ها و این افراد به شبکه های دیگه مثل دایش بپیوندند We will of course be checking in with our observers in Afghanistan in the weeks and the months to come we hope they stay safe